here we are. Here I am, Sharon, on location, Jericho Road, San Diego. And my paint board is Jericho Road 2,000 years ago. But I'm here today at my home church, Calvary Chapel, Jericho Road. And my paint board is Open Air Campaigner. And ordinarily, we paint in the open air, out at the streets, beaches, parks. But due to circumstances, I'm going to speak to you today about two men and two trees right here on Jericho Road. The first man, his name is Zacchaeus. And as you can see, he's a happy little guy. And it's because he's very wealthy, well-dressed, and it's because of his occupation. You see, he works for the Roman government. So this makes Zacchaeus a very wealthy man. But Zacchaeus is working both sides of the street because he not only gets money being a chief tax collector, he gets money from his fellow countrymen by charging them more than what the Roman government charges. And so he cheats them. And this makes his fellow countrymen very sad and very angry at Zacchaeus. And he's filling his money box with their money and making them poor. So it's not a very good place to be. On this particular day on Jericho Road, Zacchaeus decides that he wants to join his countrymen and it, because there's a crowd gathering in the street and they're following a particular man. So Zacchaeus decides that it might be worthwhile for him to join the crowd. So he closes his money box up, discontinues taking money from people, and is going to go out and join the crowd. I think he was very interested in seeing this man. This man, everybody wanted to see him. He was known for healing people and known for miracles and feeding people. And he spoke differently than the other religious people. He had a, stand, a standard of truth. And this really made Zacchaeus curious. This man, Zacchaeus was our first man on the paint board. This man, Jesus, is our second man on the paint board. So Zacchaeus went out to follow the crowd. And he was in a crowd of people that 
weren't very friendly toward him. Oh, and I forgot to mention, Zacchaeus was a short man. And there was no way that day that he could get through the crowd or around the crowd and make his way to get closer to Jesus. And he realized that once he got out there and was trying to jump up and see Jesus, he realized this is not going to work out for me. And so he decided he had he had a, he was very intellectual, I think, because you know, he figured out a way to to get extra money and and uh, so he wasn't a dummy. And he figured the only way he was going to be able to get close to Jesus was to run ahead of the crowd and climb up in a tree. So that's exactly what he did. He went ahead and he climbed up in a tree and waited for Jesus to come that way. Now I got to thinking about this tree climbing thing that Zacchaeus was doing, and I thought about what he might have to lay aside or let go of to climb that tree. I mean, after all, he was wealthy, he had nice clothes. I'm sure he had a cloak and a belt and nice sandals, and he probably would have to lay that aside to climb that tree, I would think. You know, it's hard sometimes to want to lay things aside or to let go of things that we treasure. Take, for example, this necklace that I have on. The other day I was coming home from a trip from visiting my grandkids, and my grandson, who's only about nine years old, had given me this necklace. He brought it back from Italy with his family. And it was such a treasure to me that when I got to the airport and I was putting my belongings in the tray that goes through the x-ray machine, it got tangled up in my purse strap. And I just did not want to let it go. And here I am going along, the cart's rolling along, and I, I'm not wanting to let this go. And finally I did. I took it off. I knew it would come out on the other side. But that's so like us. And I, I imagine it was so like Zach that day, Zacchaeus that day, to not, um, not maybe want to climb up in that tree, but he had the desire to see Jesus and come close to him. And so he had to let go of some things. And one of the things I'm sure he had to let go of was pride. Um, because what if somebody saw him up in that tree? If we want to draw close to Jesus, sometimes we have to give up things or let him go. He had already let his money box go for a little while, so he was moving in the right direction, and he wanted to be close to Jesus. And the thing that happens when we want to draw close to Jesus, he draws close to us. So the crowd is going along, coming closer to where Zach is, sitting in the tree, waiting for them. But you know, this is not just Jesus coming towards Zacchaeus. This is God in the flesh. So he knows all about us. He knows all about Zacchaeus that day. He knew what was on his heart. He knew he was going to be in the tree. And so when he got there, he didn't just say, hey, guy, come out of the tree. He said, Zacchaeus, come down from the tree. 
for I'm going to your house today. I bet that surprised Zacchaeus. Jesus, this man who everybody wanted to be around, was going to come to his house. So Zacchaeus got down out of the tree and And they spent time together. And you know, when you spend time with Jesus, things can happen. Things can change. Hearts can change. You see, Zacchaeus was a sinner. And you know, we're all sinners, and we all sin every day. But then there's a difference between sin like that and practicing sin. And actually, Zacchaeus was practicing sin. So he was, every morning he got up, he knew he was going to do the same thing, which was he knew probably in his heart it was wrong. But when he got with Jesus, he must have realized that after speaking with Jesus because he got up and he proclaimed to everyone that he would pay back four times what he had cheated people and he would um, even give to the poor. So, you know, there's nothing we can do in ourselves to be made right and to pay for our sins and to get to heaven. This has to be done by a, um, a perfect sacrifice and there's only one perfect sacrifice and that's Jesus and when he was living here on earth he did no sin he was God in the flesh and he lived here and he did no sin and he took our place um, on the tree and by the way this is our second tree this is the cross that <clears throat> Jesus took our place on because there's no way we can pay for our sin ourselves we can do no works we can be we can't be religious enough or go to church enough or we can't do good works we can't be as good as the net uh, the next guy the only thing we can do is allow Jesus to give us this free gift of him in his great love and going through all that pain and suffering and dying on the cross for us. He died that awful death for us and he conquered death because on the third day he rose again. That's so we could live after we die. And when we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Because Jesus is God, he not only got on the cross with love, but he has the power to rise again from the cross. This paintboard has been about two men and two trees. One man, like us, full of sin. He surrenders and seeks forgiveness. And he's given the gift of eternal life through the second man on our paintboard. And that's Jesus, who is God in the flesh and the only one that can make our lives right, in right standing, are righteous. It's his blood on the second tree, which is a payment for our sin in full that gets us to heaven. Zacchaeus received this loving gift from Jesus. And while I paint my title, I'm gonna let you listen to some music by Chuck Butler 
And I hope that you will um, do what Zacchaeus did and seek forgiveness from Jesus and make him Lord and Master of your life. He loves you and he wants you to be part of his family. Never seen a love like this before With arms open wide The fool that I was Who waited so long Is coming undone at your side Never knew that love could sound like this you speak to my storm The coldest of hearts Could never resist The reason, my love, you were born To live a life of sacrifice I'll Never even touch the price For what has been given for us I'd stand before the world and say That no one's ever loved this way But we know better now We know better now This title says, Zacchaeus received Jesus with joy. Can you do that? Can you be told about your sin and receive it with joy in your heart? You can if you're telling Jesus. He not only forgives by completely cleaning us up, he gives himself to us to live in us and be with us. And he promises never to leave us, no matter what. That's because, like the song says, there's never been a love like this before. Never. 
His love has no boundaries. He forgets your sin. As far as the east is from the west. When he says he forgets it, he's saying that he won't let anything stand in the way of completing you in your purpose in life. He has good plans for you. Jeremiah 29.13 says he has purpose for you, and it's a good purpose and plans for you. I wanted to do this video to reach out to those who will feel so overwhelmed by all that's going on in our world. I want you to know that it is in these times like this that Jesus comes close. I mean, it's good if we try to draw close to him, but sometimes if you'll just listen, he's trying to draw close to you whether you're drawing close to him or not. He calls people from every nation, race, creed. He calls you to be his own. And it doesn't matter what you've done or what the world is doing to you. You can receive him the same way Zacchaeus received him. Come close. Open your heart. He will show you how you can have salvation and eternal life. Thank you for letting me share my paintboard and my heart. God bless you.